Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and today we are playing a really interesting indie game. It's called Time Spinner. You can get this on all the major modern platforms PC, PS4, Xbox, Switch. I am playing it via the Game Pass service on PC. Of course, you can get it on Steam or whatever as well if you prefer. Uh, but this is a really interesting game because it does a couple of things that are very derivative, but it does it in a way that I feel is just, it just meshes very well. Um, so basically it has the kind of aesthetics and vibe of a 16-bit RPG, kind of the same as you might expect from a game like Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy VI, for example. Definitely has that kind of look, that kind of sound going on for it. Um, some of the aesthetics bleed into the menus and all that good stuff. But in terms of gameplay, it's a lot more like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is one of those Metroidvania games that has been heavily influenced by one of two games from the past, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Super Metroid, both 2D exploratory games that allow you to play in a more or less non-linear fashion. Uh, there is, of course, some linearity involved, but you have a lot of choice and freedom, and you have to backtrack and all that kind of stuff. That's what this game is, essentially. It's one of those kinds of games, so... If you're kind of, like, bored of Metroidvania games or sick of it, I guess you'd probably turn off the video by now after hearing that. But if that sounds interesting to you, um, then maybe you should stay in tune, and I'll explain why. So, Time Spinner is brought to us by Chucklefish and Lunar Ray Games. And uh, I think Lunar Ray was the actual developer. Chucklefish is just the publisher, I understand, although they did make some cool games, like, um, I think it was uh, War... I want to say Warframe, but it's not Warframe. It's like War Spoiled or something like that. The name escapes me at the moment. Uh, but it was kind of like a uh, strategy RPG kind of game in the vein of like Fire Emblem. I'm sure you guys can come up with it in the comments. But that's them right there. Uh, I think they were also responsible for Starbound, which is a good uh, Terraria Minecraft kind of game that they have out on PC. So they have some pedigree in the indie scene. Of course, Lunar Ray, I'm not really familiar with them. But uh, they clearly have a love for those classic style games, like I said. And this game does a very good job of emulating that look and feel. But it does have a few mechanics of its own that it does introduce. Uh, for example, it has the ability to be able to stop time and be able to use enemies as platforms and such. Which is a really neat idea, of course, we've seen this in games in the past before. But the thing is, even though it's a really neat idea, and I really appreciate how it's used, it's used so minimally in this game that it doesn't really add much to the game. Like, I mean, it pretty much would play exactly like Symphony of the Night, except for the fact that it has that minor bit of mechanic that for some reason... It has, but it barely touches upon it at all, which is kind of really strange. And there's all kinds of different weapons. You get these orbs that you can equip to do different kinds of elemental attack types against enemies, of course. You'll want to try to use orbs that are best against whatever enemies you're fighting. You can switch out the three different sets of orbs at a time with a simple press and one of the right bumper buttons so you can easily switch your attacks. Really cool idea. I really appreciate that, of course, but, you know, at the same time, there's just one type of each type of orb, one fire orb, one wind orb, and so on. You can level them up, of course, but you don't get, like, better ones in that, so everything is tied to leveling those orbs up, which, of course, you do by using the orbs against enemies, and you can also use certain items to upgrade them. So it would have been kind of interesting if they had, like, some kind of different attack orbs of the same elemental type. But I get it, you know, it's not exactly a super long game. We're talking about probably less than 10 hours to play through this one, to complete it, um, at least in a normal playthrough, of course. There are multiple difficulty settings, and you can set it to nightmare mode, and unless you're ridiculously good at these games, I definitely don't recommend it at the beginning. Because... At the very beginning, you'll die in literally two hits on Nightmare Mode. <laughs> At 
the enemies do a ridiculous amount of damage on that mode so that's something you'll want to save for uh, subsequent playthroughs when you know what you're doing with this game even if you're a skilled player you should at least breathe through it in normal just so you can kind of get a vibe for how the game feels before you try to you know do that hardest difficulty setting so yeah it's pretty tough um i beat the game a couple of times and i haven't even bothered messing with the nightmare mode just because it's ridiculous and unfortunately you can't carry over a new game plus into that difficulty setting that would have made it a little more tolerable in my opinion because at least i could have kept the stuff that i had leveled up in order to get through that content maybe a little more easily have a little more health be able to was staying a little more and see if there's any kind of new content in the way of that mode unfortunately i'll never know that just because i don't really have the patience or skill level to handle stuff like having the ability to only take one hit without dying <laughs> you know i'm not really very good at video games to that degree uh most certain video games anyway most certainly but uh it's there if you want it of course you know this game does offer a lot of opportunities for that and it's it's a rock solid game it really plays really good it looks good it sounds good it does a lot of good stuff but it is at the same time pretty uh similar to other games that you played in this type of genre it's not really doing anything new um i think that the time mechanic would have been something really new but unfortunately with the way that it's implemented here it's like I said, it's barely ever used in the game. You're only using it a few times in the entire game. Uh, mainly just to get to spots where you can't get them. And of course, once you get better jumping abilities and so on, you're going to use it even less. And only use it to get to the most hardest to reach areas that you can't otherwise reach without it. So, you yeah, definitely keep that in mind. But you do have uh, two very large maps that you can explore. A past and present map. Things change up, of course. Um, you'll unlock different abilities. And a pro tip for people, of course, I don't really consider it as a spoiler because it's not explained at all in the game. I kind of had to like, oh, duh, of course that makes sense after reading a walkthrough. You'll see these different little branches in a couple of different areas of the map that block your progress. And you can't seemingly find any way to get through them. Well, if you have the fire orbs, you can go into the past and burn those vines so that they don't appear in the present timeline. So, keep that in mind. That's a little pro tip for you guys, since that's not explained at all in the game. Like, the game explains all the other mechanics, but it decides to collectively, or selectively rather, not explain that little bit at all and just leave you to your own devices which is kind of weird uh you know you typically when you introduce new mechanics it's good to have some kind of feedback or some kind of moment to teach the player some kind of way for the player to maybe practice this moment like maybe when the player gets to fire orbs for example for the very first time you can introduce that obstacle so the player is like, okay, I need to use that in order to get past this obstacle. And then they'll have that knowledge going forward. Um, or at least they were taught that. And if they don't realize that's kind of all in the player's fault, you know, but I digress. You know, it's got that one, that little hidden mechanic that you have to keep in mind. Um, if you want to be able to complete the game entirely, of course, everything else was explained except for that one mechanic. You know, I just thought the fire orb was just like all the other orbs and didn't do anything other than just attack enemies. But for some reason, that specific orb does have something special that the other orbs don't. Uh, but I digress. I did enjoy my time with Time Spinner. It is a really good game. But um, just because of the fact that it's not the most original in this genre, it's hard to recommend if you're not a heavy fan of this genre to begin with. So um at least at full price so i think is i think the game is high quality so if you like these metroid video games definitely pick it up uh if you have game pass of course or i'd maybe consider like a a slight sale it's not like a super pricey game to begin with i think it's normally 15 dollars full price so it's not a pricey game maybe if you can get it for like 10 bucks that'd be kind of worth it you know ba basically a dollar an hour when you figure in the gameplay time you could probably get through it even quicker if you're not a scrub 
at video games like me, of course. But, um, but yeah, it does have a lot going for it, but it's not really doing anything new at the same time. So, you know, there are other games you could play that'll give you a little more bang for your buck, like Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, of course, for example. Uh, definitely check out my review on that via what I'm playing. I reviewed that last year uh, just to see how that game compares to this. Uh, but yeah, that's all we've really got time for. I did, did enjoy this game, guys. It's, it's pretty fun, but it's not the best or anything like that, you know. I really would say the best part of it is the aesthetics, the graphics, and the music. I really enjoyed both of those in the game. It definitely had that strong 16-bit vibe. That I appreciate from back in the day. So, yeah, I think that's kind of enough of a reason. If you're into that stuff, that's enough of a reason to check this game out. But let me know what you guys think if you played uh, Time Spinner, or what you think about this one. Uh, leave a comment down below. And uh, until then, Dow Phoenix out.